All right, this is another one of Mr. Anger's coffee talks without the coffee breath. I can take a sip of coffee and on the video you can't smell my breath. Aren't you lucky? This lesson <clears throat> is related to phys uh, biology 1107, biology 1107, and there are several confusing concepts that I often have to help students with in here. One of these is the difference between genes and chromosomes. <clears throat> so I'm going to draw a picture here of a long strand, and that is going to be a strand of chromatin material or a chromosome. Now I'm going to simplify this. Technically this may not be correct and if there is a science teacher or a biologist watching this they may beg to differ with me but this I think makes it simpler for students. The chromosome is made up of genes. So maybe from this end to right here is one gene and then from here maybe down to here is another gene. And then there's another gene maybe right here that controls something in the body. And each, it's all these little genes linked together. <clears throat> and the genes, as we'll talk about in a future section in this piece, control different things like um, the color of your hair, the color of your eyes, whether or not you can roll your tongue, whether your earlobes are connected here, or whether it's a lobe. And there's lots of things like that, length of your fingers. And each, each characteristic is controlled by a gene. <clears throat> now, in every cell, there are actually two strands of genes that have exactly the same type of genes in the same sequence side by side or within the nucleus. And what happens is one of these genes came from the person's father and the other gene came from others. So I'm using blue and red to distinguish the two. And so this is why we say that in every cell nucleus there are 46 chromosomes and 23, we would say 23 pairs of chromosomes. So 23 of the 46 chromosomes came, they're blue, came from dad. 23 of the 46 chromosomes came from mom. But these are two very important numbers that you'll see throughout this section in the pace, is understanding the difference between the chromosomes and genes, and then the fact that there's the pairs versus the number of chromosomes. Let me get another marker here. <coughs> Two other very important concepts in this section, if I can erase this without making a mess. All cells can be classified as either being diploid or haploid. <clears throat> the diploid cells are basically, whoops, let me make that an all, all cells in the body and the di, di means two, and that means we have two chromosomes for every trait, one from dad, one from mom. So this is the full complement, the full set of 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. Over here, the haploid are very unique cells. These are only the gametes. Whoop, spell that correctly. Which would be the sperm produced by dad and the ovum produced by mom. And these gametes have only one set of chromosomes. So in the sperm, we only have 23 chromosomes. In the ovum, there are only 23 chromosomes. One gene still for every trait, 
but one coming from dad, one coming from mom, and then when they unite and form that zygote, the fertilized cell, then there will be the full set of all the chromosomes in that new diploid cell, diploid cell. <clears throat> so the only place in the body where these haploid cells exist would be in the reproductive organs. And every place else, the skin, the brain, the organs, the bones, the muscle tissue, everywhere else in the body that your cells exist are all the diploid cells. Now, here's one more important term that looks very similar, and yet there's a difference between the reproduction of the cells The diploid cells reproduce by a process called mitosis. Now, not halitosis, that's bad breath. But mitosis is when the cell follows that process of interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And you see that in your pace. It shows you a picture of all those process, all the steps. But basically, the, uh, the genetic material makes a duplicate copy of itself so that there are, for just a very brief time, instead of 46 chromosomes, actually double that, 92 chromosomes. And then the cell splits apart and forms two identical cells. This is for the process of replacing cells. And the cells that are formed are exactly like the original cells. So we start with what's called the mother cell, and then the results are called daughter cells. But they are exactly like the original cell. That's mitosis. Myosis. <clears throat> Oops, there is no E in here. It's just M-E-I-O-S-I-S. Meiosis. Notice how it's a little different than mitosis. Meiosis, the cell splits apart, just like mitosis, but then before it has a chance to replicate, it splits again, and the cells that are formed are haploid cells, which means they only have 23 chromosomes. And so the only cells that are formed during meiosis would be the sperm and the ovum. So these only happen in the reproductive organs, the testes and the uh, ovaries. It's the only place that meiosis occurs. And the cells that are formed have only one gene, one for every trait, one chromosome. And that's the only time that happens, the only place that it happens. All the other cells in the body carry on mitosis and are constantly replacing the cells. I think it's every seven years that your body has completely replaced every single cell. Some more often than that, the cells in your mouth are replaced very frequently, but other cells in the body take longer for that process to happen. <clears throat> All right, I think that kind of summarizes the main difference between the diploid and the haploid, where these cells are located, and the type of re uh, reproduction <clears throat> that takes place, meiosis, for the haploid cells and mitosis for all the other cells of the body. And I hope that helps you as you study and prepare for this section and get ready for the first checkup in PACE 1107.